Hello everyone, I'm John White. I am the Vice President of Product Strategy with Expedient. And I'm here to talk to you today about what we're actually utilizing NSX for, which Pat did a great job this morning in his keynote setting me up as what we're gonna talk about today and what I'm gonna show you is a lot about multi-cloud. So about a year ago, I came up with a challenge for our product strategy team and engineers that I wanted to actually do DR as a service from anywhere. I wanted to be able to fail over a virtual resource, no matter if they're in a public cloud, a private cloud, off of our sites, inside of our data centers, I wanted to fail it over. And I wanted to enable hybrid cloud. So I wanted that whole push button, move a VM from one site to another, or drag and drop, move a VM from one site to another, to actually exist. And last, and the hardest part of the challenge, I only wanted to do it over public internet. This is something we thought if we could put together, we would have a very, very powerful DR as a service story, that's a big part of our business as a hosting provider. So when we started looking at all the different technologies, we evaluated NSX, and on, from the surface, NSX marketing kind of looks like this. They're talking about logical switches, firewalls. Yeah, I have that already today, so what am I gonna get new? They're talking about micro-segmentation. Most people, especially CFOs, are gonna have no idea what I'm talking about. And then they talk about how they can actually build out these whole prog programmable application topologies, which again, most people don't really know what you're, talking, what you're talking about, and you're not really sure how you actually build NSX based off of those features. So we spent a lot of time learning, researching, doing training sessions focused on NSX, and we actually found features that really aren't listed on the marketing material so much. And this is a very uh, early drawing of actually what we built from an NSX solution. And two of the features that I'm talking about that you don't hear a lot on a regular basis are very, very powerful for us. Those being layer two bridging or layer two encapsulation, layer two VPN, it's called multiple things, as well as egress optimization. We found that if we use these pieces of technology, we'd actually be able to move the VMs from one site to the other really without much problem. So, Here's what the solution, you know, after about a year of work, actually looks like. And I'm going to show uh, a pretty powerful video of this. So, right, pictures are worth a thousand words or whatever it is. Video is worth a million. I'll give you a video of this actually working. So, first, to get started, um, it's very simple. We're connecting via public internet. So, we have 250 meg of public internet to each of the sites. We have some ESX hosts, the SAN, some switching. And as you go down the stack, you'll see it's a pretty standard environment. So, you're running. Uh, dual V centers, one on lo each location. You have the ESX manager, and then you have the, e or the NSX manager and the NSX edge gateways. From there, we have multiple VLANs sitting behind that where the virtual machines are actually running. So like I mentioned, it's really cool to kind of look at these Visios, but it's way cooler to actually see the technology and work. So I'm gonna run through a uh, demo video here that actually shows hybrid cloud as well as push button DR, which we actually enabled for DR as a service. Do you have audio on it? Meeting Kitty 2 and just serving as the primary site. All right, so I'll go the audio then. Uh, good thing I did this demo. Um, so what we're going to look at here is actually we're going to do a trace route to a public IP, and we're actually going to show that this public IP is actually living in our Columbus data center. That's what uh, UPA stands for. It's a short name for our Columbus Upper Arlington data center. So this is in Columbus, Ohio. The website that I'm actually looking at here is very, very simple. It's uh, made up of three components. You have a virtual firewall, you have a web server, and then you have a database server running MariaDB. So we just created a WordPress site to actually show this functionality. If we take a look at the web client, you can get a good lay of the land um, of what we're actually doing here. So it's two separate ESX clusters, two separate vCenters, the first one looking at the top is in Tide Point, so that's our Baltimore data center. This is gonna act as our secondary site right now. And then the other site is our Upper Arlington, which is gonna act as our primary site. So as I mentioned, we were, we were utilizing NSX inside of this environment. What we're doing here, when I talked about layer two encapsulation, if you haven't seen this before, you can actually see it here is you're actually able to span a VLAN across multiple sites. So these four VLANs, pretty simple VLANs, mainly for management, one for vMotion traffic, we're actually able to just push those across public internet circuits from Columbus, Ohio into Baltimore. 
So one of the first things I want to show you is, like I mentioned, we have the firewall, the web server, and the database server. We're actually going to do a cross-site or cross vCenter vMotion using the migrate feature from Columbus into Baltimore of our database server. So you go through and it's a standard migration. If you haven't done this before, it's a standard migration. Um, you know, basically clicking, uh, clicking through this, these boxes here, basically the wizard to actually move it. Grab our storage, we're gonna put it in a folder. This is the key part, put it in the right network. This is something uh, I have experienced putting it in the wrong network multiple times and realizing why the hell does this demo not work and there you go, I put it in the wrong network. So once I hit this button here, I'm gonna start a timer and I'll actually show you and see how, this, how long this actually takes. Remember, this is only public internet connection and I'll actually show you uh, a constant ping from the web server to the database server. Now, this is really the magic part in my eyes. So you're watching the web server, it's pinging the database server, you see the latency jump. So it was sub one millisecond, it went to about 17 milliseconds, that was the web server talking to the database server as the database server went from Columbus, Ohio to Baltimore, Maryland, which is about a few hundred miles, okay? Pretty cool, it did it all in about seven minutes over public internet connection, which is pretty impressive itself. The uh, VM is probably about uh, 20 gigs, so it's, it's fairly small. But if you actually have you know, application developers that are worried about running in the cloud, this is a great way for them to never know where it's actually running. Because at the end of the day, they still have that IP, it's still actually sitting, um, you know, they're just talking to an IP, they don't really know where it's actually sitting. That's pretty powerful for us as sysadmins. So now that my database server is in Baltimore, what I want to do is actually move my VSRX as well as my web server from Columbus to Baltimore. And we utilize Zerto and we created a solution what we call push button DR. And if you're familiar with Zerto, you've probably seen the screen before. And you'll see we have a VPG build out with two VMs, the VSRX and the web server. <coughs> and we'll select the VPG that we want to move and uh, hit that basically that big failover button. It'll prompt you a few times and it'll kick it off. You can see we're sending it over to Baltimore and then we want to make sure that the auto replication is coming back because that's another process that you don't want to deal with after. I've dealt with it. We're going to hit this big red button, we're going to start a timer and we're going to watch all this work. <clears throat> now remember, I mean, the cool thing about this is the public IP again is staying the same. So you don't have to deal with DNS failover, GSLB, all that fun stuff. You don't have to deal with VPN tunnels, having to write to two different firewalls. This is one firewall, so you don't have to deal with that, that application consistency there, living at a primary site and then moving to the secondary site. So you can see it kicked off a whole bunch of tasks here. Um, since we did it a live failover, we just didn't cut the power. It's gonna take a little bit of time to actually spin everything down but we'll run a constant ping to that IP that, if you recall, was actually running in our Columbus data center uh, previously. So it takes about 50 seconds here. And then you'll start to see everything start to time out. There we go. This is where the magic happens because I did not do anything else other than hit that big red button, essentially. So it fails. Everything's going, we're having VMs now starting to spin up on the other side, eight minutes goes by. In sub 10 minutes, we actually failed over that public IP from Columbus, Ohio to Baltimore, Maryland. Everything's coming back up now. VPNs, the website, everything's up and running and I didn't really have to touch anything. It's pretty powerful from a sysadmin side that you can actually enact to enable a DR plan without really doing anything because we never know where we're actually gonna be when we need to actually declare a DR, DR scenario. So you can see once we refresh the web client here, everything's moved from our Up Arlington data center into our Tide Point data center in Baltimore. Now to round off this demo, I wanna actually show how the IP is actually switched from one site to the other. So we'll actually do another trace route to that IP. 
You're going to see right away that it's going to take a different path now to that IP. It's going to hit a few other Expedient Core routers, and then it's going to land on the TDP Core router, showing that the IP now, as well as all the servers, have moved from one site to the other within 10 minutes with all, all you have to do is push a button. So this is one way that we actually utilized NSX, which I think is pretty cool. Now that we've utilized NSX now, we can start to utilize all the other features that go along with it. So where we're utilizing firewall and load balancers today, uh, we can start to use some of the native NSX stuff. One of the really cool things that we can start to do is finally grab and understand what that east-west traffic is inside of, our, inside of our data center that's occurring. So when VMs are chatty to each other, we'll actually know what's going on. Palo Alto has some very cool solutions here. And automation is probably the last and probably one of the biggest benefits we get. We're rolling out customers on such a rapid rate. Anytime we can save a second, let alone a minute, for every one of our customer deployments is very, very big for us. So a few key takeaways for you. If you're not working on NSX um, today, you, know, you might want to start looking at some of the other features that aren't on the marketing slicks as they might be able to help you out. Um, NSX really allows us to bridge that gap between private and public clouds as well as even the bigger pub, public cloud providers. We saw it in the keynote demonstrated today, how you can actually span that network from multiple sites. Now, if you haven't started working with NSX yet, it's not easy, so start soon. Um, there's a ton of stuff to write, there's a ton of stuff to read about. People are writing about this every day. Um, there's videos online, there's great tutorials from VMware, as well as a ton of great boot camps that we sent a lot of our engineers to go to to actually get started with this whole thing, as it's not easy. If you have a lab, start building NSX inside of it and build it often, because it's going to break multiple times, and you're going to get really, really good at building that lab. So I would love to answer any questions, uh, post this, obviously, um, via email, Twitter, LinkedIn. Feel free to reach out and connect with me. My engineering team and architects are always available for discussion as well. Anything we can do to help the community learn NSX, that's a great thing for everybody. Thank you very much.